What's going on everybody? Good morning. I guess it's the afternoon. I don't even pay attention to what time it is anymore. All I'm ever doing is out getting dusty and cut up and stabbed and looking at plants out here in the desert. Anyway, uh, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays a Bot and He Doesn't. I'm going to try to keep this one short if I can. Verbose bastard that I am. There's a rare plant here. Okay, it's a member of the sunflower family, Asteraceae. And uh, it occurs up and down this road on these chalky, chalky limey sands. Let's go check it out. Okay, so here on the limey sands, just a couple miles down the road, we got another pretty rare plant, a species in the genus Xyloriza, which has uh, purple ray flowers and is in the composite family, Asteraceae. But most are in the uh, Mojave and Colorado deserts. This one, Xyloriza ridei, uh, occurs here in the Chihuahua Desert, and you can see it right here. Not blooming, not much to show, not much to look at right now, you know, unless uh, you're familiar with the genus already. But uh, regardless, look at it, look at that. It's Romer. Romer's, Romer's not happy right now. Romer's a hound dog. Romer uh, has neuroses, and uh, we're trying to get him some Xanax, some dog Xanax, some CBD. But, uh, you know, until then, he's just got to live with his... Uh, his mental anguish, which uh, it, I think at this this point that amounts to not being able to get back into the truck that he just jumped out of. So we all have our reasons for trauma. Don't mock it. Anyway, here you go. Beautiful perennial. See the woody stem left over from last year? Still going off. It's in bud. Look at the filaries. Getting ready to go off. Look at those filaries. And you can see just the scales. Scales in the glands. So tiny, but when you look close, there they are. You can see them. Adaptation to the hot and dry. And it's got that kind of glaucous color to it. Coming up on the, the soft, this ever so soft, limey sands. Wasn't a limey, didn't that used to be a derogatory term for an Irish person? Was it Irish person or Scottish? I don't know. Look, more of those uh, fossil bivalves. Take me back to the Cretaceous. God, how I'd love to go. Okay, I should also mention this video was brought to you by a Dog CBD. That's www.dog-cbd.com. Okay, for all your neurotic canine needs. Okay, calm you down, give you the goddamn Xanax. We're going to smooth you out. Okay, get you straight. Everybody's neurotic these days. Don't hate yourself. Hey, at least Romer's complaining because he, he can't get back in a truck. You know, rather than complain because he's got the dog choya lodged in him. I've had these lodged in uh, in my thigh, my groin, my ass, my ankles. Many times, barbed spines, opuntioid subfamily. Oh, see, it just stuck to me right there. And, of course, those uh, those stems readily break off at the nodes right there. And then uh, will root themselves into the ground again. You can see they're uh, cacti, just little batteries, man. Full of moisture, full of carbs and water. And, uh, you know, this guy could go, you cut him off from his roots, he could probably go, you know, six months in this environment with uh, with no moisture till he dried out. So, of course, you just got to let your gear, let your gear everywhere, just ready to stab you. Every plant, ready and willing to stab you. But 70 million years ago, it was a, a shallow, probably very peaceful, lovely ocean. Oh, that's a nice piece of some petrified material. Look at that. It's been agatized. You know, I think I'm trespassing right now. I don't know. I didn't, I mean, not that I care too much, but, you know, not, not really doing anything wrong. I mean, in someone's mind I am, I guess, but not in mine. The echinocactus horizontalonius. It's so horizontal. What's this? Just old gypsum? Could be calcite. It's a, it doesn't doesn't quite look like selenite. Doesn't quite look like gypsum. It's nice though. Badlands are so good. Earth exposed, just pure nudity. Look at all the ocotillo up on that uh, on that hill. You know, I figured I might as well take advantage of the nice weather. You know, it being 60 degrees instead of 102. You know, I don't, I don't mean to be rude, but I think blue bonnet's got to be one of the dumbest fucking common names in existence, I think. Why is it a bonnet? Does anyone even wear bonnets? It's just some really weird, wholesome, vanilla, antiquated shit. 
Don't like the way it makes me feel inside. It's kind of weird. But look at this. Look at this. Uh, look at a yellow pattern on that banner pedal back there. That posterior pedal. A little speckled yellow. Can't even see the keel because the uh, wings are uh, hiding it. There you go. Got to pull them down. Pull the wings down. You can see the pollen just dumping out, just spilling out of that keel from those 10 stamens in there. Nine fused together, one separate. Why couldn't they just call it Texas Lupin? Just call it Lupin. It doesn't need to be a bonnet, okay? It sounds like some weird, you know, maybe they got the, what is it, who are the, what are the adult diaper community? What are the people that got a fetish with that? You know, they just call it Texas Lupin. You know, like they do with Texas Madrone, even though 90% of the species range of Texas Madrone is actually in Mexico. You know, Texas likes to put its name on stuff. Fine, I get it. Do that. Don't cut. No, no, no blue bonnet. That's stupid. Look, you got to get on the ground sometimes like a dog. Check out the cool, uh, cool brassicas. Look at those uh, silicles. Almost looks like a nice Fizaria, huh? I think it is. Got to get inside one of those flowers. Now look at a basil rosette. I'm trespassing right now, but you know, it's okay. He said it's fine. He didn't say it's fine yet, but I know he would say it's fine. Whoever whoever he is. Look at that. No, well, you got a couple leaves along the stem. Basil rosette. Then he sending up a couple inflorescences. Couple racemes. Got a nice sand mat there, too. Look at that. Nice little euphorb. How about that? See, there you go. Rip, rip the petals off. Rip those four petals off. You could see the six stamens. Two of them at a different level than any, than any other four. The four right there in the middle are a little bit taller. They're dynamous. Always got to dissect these flowers, goddammit. Such a lovely facilia. Baraginaceae is the family on this one. Look at those yellow anthers. Those purple corollas with the five fused petals. Okay, distinct at the, at the distal ends, but, uh, but fused together in a funnel otherwise. Look at it. Look at it. You got all the hairs and shit out there. All the good stuff. Look at it. The, hair, the hairs in the glands. Even got little sand grains in those, those glands. Got a scorpioid sign. See they how it curls around? You could say helicoid too, I guess. There's a difference between the two, but not much. Look at the leaves. Look at the base of leaves. You know, just here in the here in the cool shade. And it's above a sketchy desert wash. Look, the dogs can't even get up there. Look, that's nice. You guys get to hang out down there. Jake's down there looking for sausages. You know, I like letting him go first because it gives him the illusion that he's in control, you know. Which, to be honest, a lot of the time he is. Look at this texture. All this volcanic mud. Mud derived from volcanic racks. From weathered volcanic racks. You got the alkali deposits on everything. Again, a, you know, a symptom of an area that gets more evaporation. Far more evaporation than precipitation. So these rocks weather. You get the ions and what the shit coming off of them, you know. You get the salts. The solutes. And then they just evaporate. Is the, is the rocks are weathered and broken down. They got a little bit of rain, not much, but enough for shit to grow like this menzilia. Just about the just about the burst out. You got a peridoli over there too. Nice badlands. Stuff is just getting started. Seen some uh, material, but it's a, you can see it's just just starting. Cold front moved in last night. Now it's a. Uh, 60 degrees. Very pleasant out. Dry as hell, windy, but very pleasant out. Yesterday was 102. Got some nice little pieces of chert. This might have been cracked open by a person at some point, but you could see this one. This one was just natural, I think, but you could see it, it lacks the luster on the outside. Then crack it open, you got those conchoidal fractures. Real nice, uh, real nice uh, little bit of silica right there. Yeah, look at these pieces. Look at that little chunk. Wonder how old that is. Late Cretaceous, maybe?
wonder what species it was. Probably some wonderful conifer. Some massive conifer. Maybe even older, who knows? Look at that, and this piece even got the knots. A 60 million year old knot, probably older. I think this is like late Cretaceous. I think this is before, I think this is when the dinosaurs were still kicking around, you know? Chasing each other and what the shit, banging in, banging in the cycades and the ferns, banging amongst the cycades and the ferns. This is before that big comet smashed into the Yucatan. It's so smooth, got a nice luster to it. So glad it's here and not in a fucking rock shop somewhere being sold for $70. Look at that, there's another chunk just, just lodged in there. I bet you couldn't even dig that out if you wanted to. Probably goes, looks like it goes somewhat deep. So there's no living plants, but we got plenty of, uh, you know, plants from the late Cretaceous, just permineralized a little bit. You don't mind it, do you? A little silica. Don't you just love the form of the uh, echinocactus horizontalonius? Little spiral form. Those ribs just the, uh, with the, the most mild spin counterclockwise. Wonderful spiral form. There, look at the little guys. Little guys just hiding in the ground, doing that soil recessive thing that the cacti do sometimes. Now, echinocactus horizontalonius. Look, look, there's the fruits. See them? They got the trichomes. They got the trichomes on her. Hairy fruits. And now I kind of, God damn it. Look, I just told you with the goddamn dog choice. Son of an ass. Why? Why, Gad? Why? Now, I'm just going to leave it there for now. Anyway, now the kind of cactus horizontalonies, they like the limestone. You never see them growing on volcanic rock. Okay? And, uh, you know, so that, that being at most of southern Arizona is volcanic, save for a couple patches of limestone. This uh, species is mostly absent from southern Arizona. It's mostly a Chihuahua desert species. But, and I say but, there are a few populations on the very few strips of limestone that you do get in the state of Arizona, down towards the south, and I've seen them. That's a Kynocactus horizontalonius subspecies Nicosii. And they got a different color flower. Okay? But at one point, you know, I, the, the population must have been contiguous before the volcanic activity. You know, however many millions of years ago. Or uh, it was a bird dispersal. The bird dispersal of the seed, and then, uh, but you know, so but there was no more gene flow between the two populations because there's all that volcanic rock in between, and so uh, you know, it's speciated, ever so slightly speciated, and uh, the alleles for whatever flower I figured I think it's orange flower. I think these have pink flower, and those ones in Arizona have orange flowers. Uh, the alleles. Uh, spread throughout that population in Arizona and uh, they became morphologically different and of course genetically isolated from the Chihuahua desert species. Should I get this? Should I take that off? I, no, I think I should. Okay, we'll do it again. How many cacti are in this photo? How many cacti are in this frame rather? Okay, let's, let's, how many echinocactus horizontalonius? Don't count, don't count the dag choy over there. Got that four. There's about four. I might be full of shit. Maybe there's some I'm missing too. I don't know. That guy, look, he's got his ass. He's just got his ass sticking out of there. I don't want to bother him. Look, he's really going. You're really going for it, buddy. Just take a take a breath. Give give some time. Is he dead in there? Oh no, sorry. I guess not. There's that Echinomastus warnachii. Beautiful species, love that. The spines aren't too dense. You could see that glaucous, kind of psych ward green epidermal tissue. There's a little seedling of this guy. And the limey sands. Look at that. Nice little brick of selenite. Nice little brick of gypsum. Just the... Imagine someone lobbing that at your head. You know, you could sell that for 50 bucks to someone put on top of their toilet, you know, uh, just frivolously attribute the non-existent healing properties to it. I never understood that. I'm not, you know, I'm not knocking anybody. You're into, you're into, you're into what you're into. That's fine. But uh, I never understood not wanting to really learn about how something was formed or uh, its place in earth history, but then thinking that it's somehow going to 
you know, get you out of your bad mood. I mean, it does get me out of my bad mood. I guess it's not total bullshit. Look at this uh, Epithelantha. Another bulky eye. Just blending right in. Look at all those, look at all those spines. Look at it. So many spines, it looks like it's wearing a fur coat. Incredible what cacti can do. There's that the Kinomastus again. Money shots. Look at that. Look at that money shot. These guys, little uh, golf ball with a foreskin just hanging out right uh, right beneath this little this little piece of uh, limey slate. Got the, uh, I mean, you got four heads right there. One, two, three, four, two on his, probably all the same plant, I would assume. Maybe not. Look, up there you got a cameo by uh, Agave Lechigia. Look at that, just waiting to stab you over there. They're everywhere up at the Lanthabokii. Limey sands. Limey soft sands, not the Terrapants limestone. And a cameo by Epithelantha Bokii. Who is Boke? That White Guys Club or what? Probably, I'm guessing. Boring! But the name is stuck and now the fucking plant is associated with it, so whatever. You can just put a little footnote in if he was a prick. I always assume that. That White Guy from the late 1800s, you could basically just put a little asterisk and was a prick uh, right beneath his name. It doesn't fuck him, I don't care. Fuck that guy. I like the plant. Just happen to be named after him. These people get upset about it. They want to change the fucking species. Who cares? Just say he was a prick. I don't give a shit. I'd kick the guy in the balls of a... What if he was nice, though? Oh, my God. What if he was actually a nice guy and I'm the asshole? What if he was a really soft, genuine, soft-spoken man and I'm a prick? Oh, yeah, there we go. Bring me back to the Cretaceous. Look at that. Cretaceous bivalve dungeon. You got him everywhere. All over in the lime, the limestone, the soft limestone, not like the mean limestone, not like the Devonian limestone from the Mojave, the Terrapin stone. Look at that. Look, you just got them everywhere. I got 86 from this guy's house uh, two weeks ago. He had a wonderful patio, though, and he had uh, some of these fossils actually in the limestone, in the flagstone he used for the patio. How about that? Okay, new species to add to the list. God, they're just fucking... I, I'm trying to show you something new. I already get distracted looking at every... Okay, here's, I believe, a seedling of a species I'm trying to show you, which I'll get to in a minute. There's an Epithelantha bokei. Okay, we got an Aerocarpus physeratus right there. Oop, hiding, see that? Hiding right there. Another Epithelantha bokei. And there's the, there's the plant I'm trying to show you, but here's a better individual. God damn it, did I just see one more? I could have sworn I'd just seen another echinocactus. Kind of Fossils everywhere. Another Epithelantha. Okay, I'm sorry, getting ADDs really bad. ADDs really bad. Here we go. Neoloidia. A species of Neoloidia. Neoloidia conoidia. How's that? Okay. Green eggs and ham. I'm going to start reading you Dr. Seuss right here. If he hasn't been canceled yet, I think he did. Don't cancel green eggs and ham, though. Don't cancel Sam I am, you prick. You like how that rhymes? Neoloidia conoidia. Subspecies abovoidia. I'm just kidding about the subspecies. But anyway, there you go. Look at those central spines. Look how prominent they are. Okay. Almost looks like an echinocereus. Unfortunately, he's not flowering. He's just hanging in, hanging in there, hanging tough. Look at these guys, too. Look at these guys. Tiny little bastards everywhere. The, the Chihuahua Desert cactus diversity is true to roof. Okay, even when it's not lit up and blooming, it's still pretty lit up, goddammit. It's, it's pretty good. Can you see the tubercles in there? Can you see those little tubercles beneath those spines? Kind of, not quite. You got quite a few. You got a, quite a dense network of spines. Central spines, radial spines, all in what the shit. Anyway, there you go. Another species. So much diversity. So much diversity. You know? You just gotta just gotta pay attention. Look really close, god damn it. Look really close. God damn, I didn't even know it. I was stepping on an epithelanth of eye. Then there's an aerial carpus right there. Okay? Gonna obscure the location on all these, of course, so that the some Jadrul bastard can't come out here and poach it, and then, you know, only to have it slowly die on his windowsill or mantle or wherever the fuck. I don't, I don't get that. You collectors, you know, if you have valid collectors, botanic gardens should be collecting stuff, you know, to preserve this stuff for so when the human tumor gets here and wipes it all out, you you still got the the genetics preserved. But you know, some of the weird collectors that are unscrupulous and would poach, I just don't get it, man. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Why don't you go? You got to go see a therapist about that. Talk about your need to hoard. Oh, look at it. They're literally everywhere at Areocarpus. I'd love to be out here when they're blooming. Look at this tiny guy. Is he still alive or no? I can't tell. 
I can't tell. Where'd Romer go? Romer and his dog Neurosis. I love that dog. Very loud dog. Fucking hound dogs always. What's love got to do? Got to do with it. What's love but a second hand emotion? That area of carpets. What's love got to do? Said it's got to do with it. Who needs a love when you can't get a dog? Oh! Neoloidia conoidia, you got epithelia lampabokii looking nice over there. Got some areocarpus, got a bunch of areocarpus. Look at it, just, just, just embedded in the ground. Look at that, goddamn. Look, see there you go. There's a, there's a tiny neoloidia, tiny neoloidia seedling. With my finger for scale, I know he's there because I just accidentally uh, put my hand on him and he stabbed me. You know, epithelia is not stabby like that. No other cacti here is stabby like that, surprisingly. Maybe the uh, echinomastus, but it's not that. So just by default, uh, you know, you know it's a neoloidic. I got I love I can't get over this fucking cactus. Look at that thing. What a what a stunner, what a butte. Look at that. Who knew a golf ball with a foreskin could be so beautiful? Huh? Some very interesting fossils in these uh in these slabs. Kind of like these, uh, almost looks like some sort of like a squid or a, good, look at that. What do you think that is? See that rad? Looks like a lying rad. What could that be? Who the, who the fuck knows? Who knows what was going on in the Cretaceous Sea? Were the, were the, uh, what was it, Mosasaurs, Mesosaurs? Were they still around? Were they still gnawing on people? Gnawing on the dinosaurs and whatnot? You know, known on the cavemen from the uh, 6,000 year old earth, you know, that Jesus, you know, Jesus was with the dinosaurs. I went to the creation museum once, really blew my mind. I always meant to, I went, meant to go back on psychedelics sometime, but I uh, haven't done it yet. Maybe I'd do it. I forget where it is. It's in a, it's near a dino, it's near like dinosaur footprint park in central Texas. It's really depressing there. It's really, I feel sad for any kids that got to grow up in that kind of environment because they are teaching some wacky shit at the uh, anti-evolution museum look at this not open yet but they'll be opening tonight because it's an evening primrose so they threw a bracket carpet look at that leaves like a datura dusty chalky green with uh looks like you got some tiny you got some hairs on her do you get some tiny hairs look at that the leaves look the same color and texture as that tura, but it's an evening primrose and again those buds they should be opening tonight they'll be opening up shop tonight for the pollinators Look, there's one, there's one with an erect, an erect bud. Again, opening up shop tonight. One night, one night only. Be open in about two or three hours once that sun's down. All the pollinators will be here. You got leaves with the uh, texture of a dead turtle. Look at that. Romer, come here. Come here. You want to be in the movie? Huh? You want to be in the pictures? Come here. Look at his balls. What a beautiful dog. He's got a little white toupee. Come here. Hey, hey, don't, don't be like that. Okay, we're gonna show you this plant right here. Coming up on the Badlands. On the Badlands, you got the selenite, you got the gypsum everywhere. The limey, the limey limestone. Look at this bastard right here. This is a pretty, this is a pretty magnificent plant. This is a buckwheat, Ariagonum, Ariagonum havardii. Look at those goddamn, almost rosette leaves. Not in flower, who gives a shit? It's enough of a stunner right now. Ariagonum, of course, is a massive genus Highly successful in the American uh, West and Southwest. You can get a couple in Arkansas and Kansas. Get some in Oklahoma. Some very beautiful ones in Oklahoma and uh, North Texas. But this guy is a stunner. This genus does amazingly well in the deserts. And they speciate like hell. There you go. Ariagonum havardii. I will see if we can get you some more. Maybe we'll find one in flower. But, uh, I mean, think of what it takes to come up on a barren environment like this. You know, you go to a barren environment in the deserts of North America, you're going to find an Ariagonum. You go to a barren desert environment, that is, that's a fucking banger right there. Look at that. God damn. Look, how, how old do you think this is? God damn. <laughs> Plants are incredible. They just... It's hilarious. The earth is incredible. And to think that uh, 75 million years ago, this was uh, at the bottom of the ocean. 
the bottom of an inland sea. Look at it. Just a couple, just a couple mounds, nothing else. Nothing else growing. Oh, there's a, uh, there's a uh, geriatric coyote coming at us right now. Look at it. Nothing. There's no, nothing coming up right now on that soil. Just the clumps of that perennial area. How do you even be a perennial in an environment like this? I'm used to most desert plants, at least desert, uh, most of the plants in the deserts being uh, annuals, you know, just having a very short life. Live fast, flower, bang. Produce seed, swollenovaries.com, with the ovules inside, then die. How do you how do you even purport to be a damn perennial in an environment like this? Unreal. I mean, I know how Desilirion does it. Desilirion leophyllum. Gotta pay attention. One of the keys for identifying Desilirions is paying attention to those marginal spines. Of course, it sends up a big... Uh, a big stalk, as you can see over there. See that? See that stalk poking up? How'd you like to be caned with that? Those are the stalks. They actually, they the, a lot of the Mexicans will carve them and, uh, you know, make walking sticks out of them and then sell them on a river. And those are always the ones I go and buy, specifically because uh, Border Patrol hung signs saying don't purchase these goods. So that just automatically made me want to do it. Is that dog shit or coyote shit? Looks like dog shit. Who knows? Come here, you little shit. You little asshole. I'll tell you, goddammit. What is those? Calm down. Why you? Hey, settle down. Don't start that shit with me. No. Look at it. You can see the layers. Of course, each layer, again, representing a different depositional environment. Who knows how many years, hundreds of years, thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, whatever. In the distance, of course, you know, you gotta get, you gotta get the mouth breathers taking their goddamn vroom vroom go-karts up there. <laughs> it's a fucking, ah, oh God. What are you gonna do? It's all over the world. You know, you go to Chile, you see the same thing. Go to the deserts of, uh, maybe, probably, you know, go to the deserts of, uh, South Africa, probably see the same thing. It's just, you know, it's an ape thing. It's a human thing. But these formations, man, I cannot get over. Badlands, you always find the most incredible stuff in the Badlands. Just naked geology. This might actually, I think that's donkey shit, feral donkeys. Hopefully somebody takes them out because they would just uh, destroy the ecology here. That's why you need it. You need the, the bears and the mountain lions. You, you know, they used to have grizzlies and uh, grizzlies just north of here in Fort Davis, Texas, but they all got wiped out early 1900s. God, I love barren environments. Oh, I feel like I'm back in the Atacama. Just about 10,000 feet uh, lower in elevation. Okay, well, I was full of shit. There is one other plant here. And uh, it turns out it's actually uh, federally listed endangered. Don't go saying that to some people, though. Any landowners that gets their panties in a bunch. That's, that gets them scared. Gets them worried that it's going to it's gonna get their land taken away from them by, by the big bad federal government. Anyway, here's a Cryptantha crassipes. Here's an older one. You can see it uh, fell apart. Look at this twisted, contorted root structure. There's all the dead foliage. Who knows how old that is? I mean, it's <laughs> it's got to be, I don't know, I'd guess at least a decade, maybe less. I don't know what, again, the rainfall here is not, I mean, you could say annual rainfall, but one year you might not get any rain, the next year you might get six inches. So it's hard to say, but uh, just coming up, you still got your Ariagonum, Havardii. And uh, there's that Cryptantha crassipes. Uh, Cryptantha, of course, like Ariagonum, is another very species-rich genus with a lot of species in it, a lot of diversity. And they do very well, like Ariagonum, they do very well in dry, exposed environments. Boraginaceae is the family on this one, the borage family. But uh, did you see, see them here? I mean, they're not in flower. I'm already, I'm having a great time. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm having a pretty nice time, you know? If you're not, you might be an asshole. Or maybe you're just not into plants. That's fine too. I don't give a shit. But uh you got so you got you got Dasilirion Leophyllum. You got Ariagonum Havardii right there. And you got Cryptantha crassipes. 
The Terlingua cat's eye. Never heard of Cryptantha called a cat's eye, though. That's why you can't use common names. Goofy shit. You know? There could, how many plants are called cat's eyes? What is this? That might be a... These might be a Tetranurus. Asteraceae. They look a little bit different from these. Different leaf shapes. See how they got that, that uh, fold in the middle? They're folded up a little bit. Conduplicate would be the word for that. Look at that. So much interesting shit going on. I bet there's quite a few annuals here too. So you get some rain and it uh, it does light up with a little bit a little bit more in terms of a diversity. Deserts, I'm sorry man, but deserts just tend to do the the coolest shit in terms of plant evolution. So there they are, hiding on the north face of this wash. Or excuse me, the, the north facing side of this wash in the shade. See, not much else diversity besides this uh, grass, whatever that is. Look at those leaves. Look at the leaves on that cryptantha. Look at all the hairs. And they're rather stiff, too. They're not the, you know... They're not very flexible, rather stiff. Really incredible. And then there's that the areogonum. Nice up close money shot of those areogonum leaves. Forming little rosettes. But of course there's a stem down there. There's, you know, a branching stem if you get that look. There you go. Gives you some uh, visuals of uh, looking beneath the foliage. You can see where it's died off and a slope is eroded a little bit. These plants are just, just cut out for this environment. You know, that's what evolution does. Millions of years of evolution in a barren, exposed, open, hot, dry environments. And of course, I, I, ima I can't imagine what it's like to try and grow these in cultivation. You know, they're so well adapted, so fine-tuned to just using the, the tiniest amount of available moisture they probably rot like that. They'd rot in a day or two if you tried potting them up. And I don't even know what pot soil you'd use. You know, that's the thing with a lot of these these plants, uh, these desert plants. Is you know, they really need the slow dry. You know, the the slow rate of drying from this massive uh, horizon of soil. Whereas if you got like a, a one gallon container, it just dries out too fast. They can't get the gradual acclimation to it. But a lot of these. Uh, extremely desert adapted plants are very hard they can be very hard to grow in cultivation all right and they always do better in the ground and just thrive on neglect get them going then just ignore them you know and if you tried to grow this in a hot humid environment say you had the heat but you didn't have the aridity and same thing you'd kill it you'd kill it so quick all those hairs look at it just it just rot just mildew same reason a lot of those weed farmers I have trouble with mildew. You get all those trichomes on weed, all those trichomes and glands and trichomes, remember, are just a fancy word for hair on weed. They just, uh, it just holds on to that moisture too well. It just, uh, just rots. It just gets, uh, gets, it gets the mildew. What's that? Is that somebody's pelvis? Who lost the pelvis? You know, in the sun, the donkey shit, it, it kind of does look a little bit like the epithelantha. Anyway, here's a, uh, here's one of those cryptanthus flowering. Got a single flower. I don't even know how it's flowering now. It barely had any rain here. Could see that. Look at all the hairs. Members of Baraginaceae are generally very hairy. You know, that's why a lot of them are so uh, adapted to a seasonally dry subtropical areas and deserts. There's that flower. There's that flower looking right at you. Five petals fused at the base. You got some prominent uh, dimples near that yellow part of that corolla. Look into my perianth. Look into my floral tube. You know, there goes the goddamn thing. The thing won't focus. I'm just about to lose my mind. I'm about to throw this across the road. 
Look at it. Look, look the buds beneath it. Look how hairy they are. And I can imagine why it's endangered. I mean, it needs such specific uh, habitat to grow in, the Badlands. These barren Badlands. BarrenBadlands.com. Look at the old uh, peduncle right there. And old fluorescence. Look at those stiff little hairs. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't mind laying on a road. It's not that bad. Could always, could always be worse. Nice place to just lay down. Temperature's perfect. 70 degrees. Might get a little chilly at night. Look at that. Yucca elata is apparently not having any trouble growing on this, uh, this material either. Doesn't matter how barren, how exposed it is. But that makes sense because this is, this is the same yucca that grows at the White Sands National Monument. A very coalescent yucca. Unbranched. You got a you got a little guy coming up at the base, or is that a Dasilurian? I can't tell. That's a yucca, right there at the base. That's a Dasilurian. The soap tree yucca, yucca elata. Okay, and here we go. Another plant. Little too early. I'm not early for anything. I'm normally uh, you know half an hour to an hour late. But a uh, really cool member of the uh, Brassicaceae, the mustard family. And this is a, uh, I mean it's lumped in. It's lumped in as a uh, variety of. Uh, the species panata, Stanlea panata, Stanlea panata is uh, the genus of species. But uh, this is, you know, this is so disjunct, so far removed from any of the uh, other populations that uh, it's. I mean, I almost wonder. You know, you got to really look at the DNA. Someone's got someone should do a molecular phylogeny of this and break it down. Maybe they have, and I'm just talking on my ass. I haven't read the paper yet. But either, anyway, there you go. Got the glucosinolates in those. Uh, in that vasculature, that's the secondary chemistry for which the mustard family is so uh, so notable. Of course, helps Dieter herbivory. And uh, there's those leaves, that nice uh, minty green. That nice minty green, that blue, helped uh, help uh, reflect those uh, ultraviolet rays. Oh, see, look at some bud right there, too. Look at that. Mustard, you know, why do mustard family buds always look like that? Always look the same. They got that same general shape to them all clustered together. Do it. You even look at like a broccoli and butter. It'll do the same thing. A bunch of those tiny little uh, blunt, blunt headed uh, buds all clustered together. Little leaf shape, alternate leaves. Again, that color is something else, man. Desert plants really, uh, you know, maybe I'm just a, maybe I'm just a fiend for pastels. You got to lay on the ground, get all chalky and dusty anyway too early for it but uh beautiful yellow beautiful yellow flowers when it does bloom and again mustards mustards are another one of those families that have just done so well in the deserts of north america not just north america kind of all over the world we saw some really cool uh mustard in uh in the high the high andes of uh northern chile high uh, atacama which this kind of looks like, except this is too much plant life. This were the Atacama, there'd be nothing. That last spot looked more like the Atacama. Anyway, there you go. Stanley Pinata. Variety Texanum, Texensis, Texana, Texanus. I think that was the name of a porn one. So a Texas themed porn. Wasn't very fun to watch. Look at that. So this is where all that, uh, that dusty powder's coming from. It's just this limestone uh, weathering. You know, see how easily it just comes out of it. Dusty old dust. Nothing like a desert wash at sunset. Look, little Facilia about to go off. Looks like uh, Facilia robusta. Could just see those uh, scorpioid cymes. Oh, it's so glandular. So sticky and glandular. Facilia again, another uh, very species-rich genus in uh, the North American deserts. You get a lot of them. This, this limestone is pretty great. Got your ephedra, your yucca, desilirion. Here we go. Pretty common, but still cool. Same same uh, family as that Stanley, the mustard family, Brassicaceae, Thelopodium texanum. You can see those uh, those fruits already uh, maturing right there. 
swollen ovaries out of uh, past mature flowers. Little saliques, looking like little uh, little bean pods, little legumes. Got that same uh, chalky blue color that I love so much. Divided leaves. Oh, another brassica. This guy's common as hell. Nerisserenia camporum. little four-petaled flower. Everything covered in the scales. The scales and the hairs. Again, same chalky blue color. There's that thelopodium. Nectar bar is open. It's the only, this is the only, <laughs> this is the only thing blooming right now. That and the Nair Sereni, of course. I wonder what some of these little bugs are. Some of these little flies and wasps. Look at that, just, that entire inflorescence just loaded with nectar. Oh, look, the moths are out. The moths are coming out. It's getting late. Well, that's all I got for you tonight. Why do you appreciate your desert mustards a little bit more, huh? That's all I got for you tonight. Look at that. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing to end your day with. The golden hour. Now it's lighting up that Cretaceous limestone. Well, that's all I got for you. Have a rest of, uh, have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Look at this. It's the most flowers I've seen on him yet. I wonder why he's in danger. Why is it, why is he listed in danger? You know, I assume just habitat loss. Who knows? But I mean, how much habitat can you lose out here? I mean, people are still building stuff out here. There's some goofy, we've seen some goofy shit built. But it's still such a hot, dry, barren environment. Just a just a locally rare plant, probably a narrow endemic. wonder if he gets into Mexico at all. Can you imagine what this looks like when it's just, it, when it's really lit up? You know, after a good rain year, when you got... You know, dozens of plants within, you know, a 10-yard area just all lit up. Look at that. I just seen a tiny fly pollinating them. Tiny little bastard. I mean, there's not much blooming, so he's going to get pollinated. There's not much else to go for. I don't know how it's able to grow here. Federally listed. Cryptantha crassipes. Crassipes. How do you want to pronounce that? However you want to pronounce that, my friend, you could do it. Tomato, tomato, it doesn't matter. Fuck it. Can't believe there's people that correct Latin. <laughs> Who cares? Anyway, that's a, that's a pretty nice plant to end the night with. Look at that. Middle of nowhere. I think we're trespassing right now. Don't matter. What a sunset. <laughs> All right, so, sorry. One last mustard to wrap up the evening. Nice little physaria. Can't tell. It's not an annual. It looks like it's a perennial. Four petals. Four petals, six stamens. And, uh, you know, probably if they got more rain, it's going to be a lot bigger. But you could see those four green sepals alternating uh, in between those uh, four yellow petals. All right, now I'm really done. How about that?
You know, I can never get tired of these sunsets. I'll OD on these sunsets. Seen so many beautiful desert sunsets. Look at that color. Yeah, I should really just shut up and stop talking while you enjoy it. <laughs>